It's a vast pottery army which is slowly being unearthed from the tomb where it's lain for more than 2,000 years. Stunning revelations are now rewriting the history of a great ruler. The foundation of Imperial China was ruled by Qin Shi Huang, the first emperor of the Qin dynasty, which began in the 3rd century BC and was the largest unified empire the Far East had ever seen. The Qin, with their highly centralised administration, were formidable in every respect – military might, economic might and technological inventiveness. The unyielding monarchy was held together by the totemic and brutal authoritarian Emperor Shi Huang. True enough, the empire did indeed fall in the years immediately after he died in 221 BC. At the moment, archaeologists are digging further portions of the Chinese Emperor's mausoleum. The site, where the magnificent terracotta warriors were discovered relatively recently, contains the undisturbed tomb of the Emperor. With rumours of flowing mercury and incomparable treasures, the question on everyone's lips is, what's inside? Join us as we explore the shocking discovery made in the tomb of the Chinese Emperor that was sealed for thousands of years. Despite being involved in one of the biggest archaeological discoveries of all time, the tomb of the first emperor of China, Qin Shi Huang, remains entirely shut up and inaccessible, leaving archaeologists and historians to ponder its significance. Buried behind vegetation for thousands of years was the odd and deadly history of the tomb and its contents. Due to the Roman Republic's conflict with the Carthaginians, the Mediterranean was unstable for 20 years after 218 BC. In contrast, the Far East had a period of relative stability during this time as a united China emerged from the anarchy of the Warring States period. Qin Shi Huang unified the seven feuding kingdoms of China to establish the first imperial empire. The first emperor of China was as obsessed with life as he was with the afterlife. Qin Shi Huang was hard at work constructing his mausoleum even as he sought the elixir of immortality. Recent research into ancient writings found on hundreds of wooden slats sheds light on the emperor's ambitions for immortality and the breadth of his control. Emperor Qin Shi Huang issued a national hunt for the elixir of life, and the artifact contains both his executive order and the responses from local governments. Duxiang was the name of one of the villages that informed the emperor that they would keep looking despite the lack of a magical potion. Langya, another location, asserted that it had discovered an herb on an auspicious local mountain that could accomplish the task. As a matter of fact, the construction of the emperor's tomb began long before Qin Shi Huang became the first Chinese emperor. Qin Shi Huang became emperor of Qin at the tender age of 13 and promptly set out to construct his mausoleum. However, full-scale construction did not commence until 221 BC, when Qin Shi Huang unified China and commanded 700,000 men from throughout the kingdom. It took more than 38 years to finish the tomb, which is situated in Lintong County, Shaanxi Province. It was only completed a few years after he passed away. The records of the Grand Historian, penned by Sima Qian, a historian of the Han Dynasty, provides an account of the building of Qin Shi Huang's tomb as well as a description of the structure. The mausoleum of Qin Shi Huang supposedly held palaces and scenic towers for a hundred officials, in addition to a plethora of priceless relics and antiques. Also, the tomb used mercury to mimic the flow of China's two main rivers, the Yangtze and the Yellow River. It was also programmed mechanically that the rivers would empty into the vast ocean. The celestial constellations adorned the tomb's roof, while depictions of rivers and other topographical characteristics adorned the floor. This meant that Qin Shi Huang's reign over his empire could carry over into the next life. In order to ensure the safety of the tomb, the emperor's artisans were given specific instructions to construct traps that would discharge arrows at intruders. The first emperor was a brilliant and powerful ruler, but he failed to ensure that his eldest son would succeed him. It was a failure that had devastating consequences. 
The empire that Qin Shi Huangdi established came to an abrupt end, and experts now think it may have started a bloodbath. In a period of deadly palace intrigue, as described by Sima Qian, one of the emperor's several sons plotted with the top eunuch to kill the emperor's expected heir, the eldest brother, and take the throne for himself. New evidence suggests the power grab was much bloodier than what Sima Qian said. A group of skeletons was found with artifacts belonging to the royal family. These were mostly males, possibly the deceased emperor's sons. One skull offers clues to their fate. It's split by the metal bolt from a crossbow, likely shot at close range. These young princes may have been beheaded by their ambitious brother, who wanted the throne for himself, according to experts. Near the emperor's burial site, archaeologists have uncovered a cluster of approximately 100 tombs in a different location. However, scientists remain perplexed by their discoveries despite excavating multiple sites. Body parts, pearls and bits of gold are scattered in the entranceways of the deserted burial chambers. Had they been the imperial concubines, laid to rest next to the emperor so they could continue serving him after death? On the other hand, could these tombs be symbols of something evil? According to the account left by Sima Qian, the new emperor, the usurper, killed many of his father's concubines. Unfortunately, for someone whose legitimacy as king was questionable, that course of action would have been reasonable. The usurper had already killed the heir apparent and also likely did away with other brothers who were potential rivals. But what if some of the concubines were pregnant? And what if one were to give birth to a boy who was then hidden, brought up in secret, trained to be a great warrior, and finally presented as a fully grown man able to overthrow his much older brother and take their father's title and territories for himself? There was no way out of this jam after considering this worst case scenario. Unfortunately, the women had to meet their maker. It is unclear, however, why they dismembered their bodies. The numerous graves that have yet to be unearthed may hold the key. The slaughter, however, had little purpose in the end. No one, not even Qin or Shi, the usurper, could compare to his father. His reign was short, just three years, before his family's dynasty was deposed. The first emperor's tomb surely holds many more surprises. A life-size legion of distinctively sculpted warriors, charioteers, horses, officials, acrobats, strongmen and musicians, all standing in perfect formation. The terracotta warriors are perhaps the most astonishing archaeological discovery of the 21st century. How were these China's legions of terracotta warriors made and discovered? The land belonging to farmer Yang Jifa in eastern China was covered by fruitful orchards of persimmon and pomegranate trees. In 1974, while digging a well, his spade struck something unexpected in the soil. A man's head. As Yang examined it more closely, he realized that it was actually clay and not bone. He notified the proper authorities and in the subsequent months, archaeologists in China made a remarkable finding. Beneath Yang's tranquil orchards rested an artificial army, hundreds of sculpted horses, thousands of life-size terracotta men, bronze carriages and weapons. The figures were unearthed less than a mile to the east of the resting place of Qin Shi Huangdi. At more than 25 square miles in size, the complex is considered the largest funeral complex in the world. It includes not only the enormous terracotta army, but also the tombs of actual individuals. And it is today a UNESCO World Heritage Site that draws millions of tourists each. The four pits that have been dug thus far are as follows. The largest pit, which houses the infantry, is located in the first pit. The second pit, which may be an encampment, contains archers, chariots, infantry and cavalry. There are high-ranking officials in the third, smaller pit and nobody in the fourth. Even though almost 2,000 soldiers have been located so far, that is only a small portion of the original force. Archaeologists think there may be more pits that have yet to be found, but the estimated total is close to 8,000. 
Originally depicted in vibrant hues, the figures now showcase a wide range of uniforms and facial traits, representing a wide range of military positions and occupations. They have become a symbol of the Qin Dynasty's artistic and military accomplishments around the world because of the enormous resources and hard work that went into their production 2,200 years ago. With a weight of around 450 pounds and a height of 6 feet, several of the warriors are a logistical and artistic marvel. Close inspection reveals the intricate intricacies of their hairstyles, faces, realistic garment folds, and the traces of the pigments that were formerly used to colour them, enhancing their already stunning appearance. For a long time, academics argued about the processes used to make them and even conducted experiments to try to figure out how to make them again. Setting it against the backdrop of Qin Shi Huangdi's rule makes the achievement all the more remarkable. China was a religiously and culturally diverse melting pot during his rule. It was still a strange and challenging concept to transmit and execute the dictates of a distant capital's centralised and dictatorial political power via civil servants. The first emperor fancied himself a monarch who had united the realm of the spirits and a ruler of a vast realm. His magnificent tomb stands as a monument to the pursuit of immortality, serving as a constant reminder of his magnificence to generations to come. The actual burial mound of the emperor has not been excavated by archaeologists as of yet. In its construction, labourers dug a hole 100 feet deep, laid the foundation for a tomb, and then topped it with a mound in the shape of a pyramid that was over 165 feet tall. The contents are a topic of much conjecture. The materials and architecture of the tomb show that he wanted to make sure that he had all he would need in the afterlife. As a remarkable demonstration of the dominance of a new sovereign, able to gather all the resources, labour and expertise required to build something of unmatched magnitude and beauty, its creation was meant to bolster his power while he was alive. It is likely that word of this showy endeavour spread well beyond the borders of Qin China. A life-size model army, prepared to face east toward the lands he had so magnificently conquered, added to the mystical atmosphere of an emperor who was so wealthy and strong he could build it. The construction of thousands of life-size soldiers in the 3rd century BC required an enormous amount of raw materials, technological expertise and human labour. So. How was this feat accomplished? An efficient project management system and a standardised mass production method were necessary for making the Terracotta Army. A group of archaeologists have used scientific analysis to conduct reverse engineering research which aims to reproduce the process of making these objects. They postulated that the workforce was structured into small teams that worked in tandem to create individual components. Separate groups of artisans, each commanded by a master, assembled the warriors one by one. When they were painted, they were sent down to the pits. This process did not take place in a central workshop. The weapons that the figures originally possessed were probably assembled from various armories, given to each figure by someone and then forgotten about. The setting up and coordinating of numerous workshops requires huge investment, but it is better placed to face any unexpected complications. If there is a setback, a new team could be activated to resolve the issue. Many believe that no two figures from Qin Shi Huangdai's terracotta army are identical. It may be hard to imagine that each of the thousands of warriors is a portrait of a real person, but clearly a lot of work went into making each figure look special. The manufacturers likely used a stock of various looks that, when combined, gave the idea of uniqueness. As part of their ongoing investigation into the area surrounding the terracotta warriors and the emperor's tomb, archaeologists have uncovered a total of 180 sites. These sites include a wide variety of artefacts, including miniature offices, towers, gates, gardens, lakes, animals, performers and ornaments. According to legend, Qin Shi Huang sought an elixir of life to guarantee his immortality by slowly driving himself insane with strange chemicals. He apparently tried to have a whole new planet built for himself, complete with a tomb.
it appears that artisans carved a floor map of the whole Qin dynasty, decorated the ceiling with jewels to symbolize the sky, and used quicksilver to simulate rivers and oceans. According to Sima Qian's Shiji, or Records of the Grand Historian, the most reliable account of what was actually found at Qin Shi Huang's tomb is the one that is currently available. Writing it took place 100 years after the first emperor passed away. You might think it's a work of fantastical literature. Sima Qian reports that 700,000 workers were employed to burrow through three rivers and fill the space with bronze. Then, artisans apparently carved a map of the entire Qin Kingdom on the floor, laced the ceiling with jewels to represent the sky, and created rivers and oceans with quicksilver, that is, liquid mercury, which was widely believed to have life-preserving powers in Qin times. A special machine was even apparently conceived to keep the mercury rivers flowing. Was Qin Shi Huang's vast authority and wealth sufficient to construct a mausoleum of this magnitude? All things considered, tens of thousands of tons of mercury ore would have been needed. The veracity of Sima Qian's claims will remain a mystery as long as the tomb of the first emperor remains sealed. However, with the help of some brilliant contemporary methods used by archaeologists, we may make a reasonable assumption. Tomb Raiding, 21st century style writings on Qin Shi Huang's tomb contain ominous tales of intricate networks of booby traps poised to maim and kill any who might try to enter. Archaeologists are hesitant to open the tomb of the first emperor for a more serious reason. They do not yet possess the technology necessary to preserve the fragile contents of the tomb. Thus, for the time being, it will remain sealed. Still, there are many who think the secrets of the tomb should remain hidden for fear of the same fate befalling the artifacts there as those from King Tut's tomb. Another entry point, nevertheless, did exist. In 2005, a group of researchers led by Chinese archaeologist Duan Qingbo utilized a mix of externally collected core samples, ground-penetrating radar, and electrical resistance measurements to create a computer-generated image of the interior of the mound. The image revealed a massive pyramid with intricate carvings on its interior, enclosing a room as big as a football field, the perfect spot for the tomb of the first emperor. Each of the 4,000 core samples collected from the hill was tested for the presence of mercury vapour, which would have likely seeped through the compacted soil above during the past 2,000 years, in an effort to back up Sima Qian's account of the mercury rivers. The results were astoundingly positive for every single sample, especially those collected near the burial chamber. It appears from all accounts that Qin Shi Huang's lifeless body is encircled by rivers of quicksilver, most likely within a map of his empire the size of a football field. There may be an additional, more crucial justification for keeping the first emperor's burial mound secret in perpetuity, notwithstanding the obvious evidence that the tomb includes sites and treasures that are every bit as magnificent as said. You might wonder why, if so many hundreds of thousands of workers were involved with the building of Qin Shi Huang's mausoleum, there aren't more stories echoing through history as to its interior and contents. The answer is quite shocking and reflects the cruel brutality that was as much a part of Qin Shi Huang's reign as was indulgent splendor. To preserve secrecy, the emperor is said to have had each of the workers executed in many cases, by imprisoning them within the earthen mound. Maybe we should let the memory of these unfortunate craftspeople and builders rest in peace more than the memory of the crazily narcissistic dictator who practically sealed their fate. It is unlikely that the tomb of Qin Shi Huang will be opened anytime soon. First, there are the booby traps that Sima Qian detailed in relation to the tomb. It is believed that their effectiveness would remain unchanged even after more than 2,000 years. Those who ventured into the tomb unprepared would also face an extremely high risk of death due to the mercury's presence. But the most crucial thing is that our current technology isn't up to the task of preserving the treasures that have been recovered or dealing with the massive underground complex. 
Take the terracotta soldiers as an example. They were originally painted in vibrant colors, but the paint quickly flaked off when exposed to the elements. It is highly doubtful that archaeologists will take the risk of opening the tomb of China's first emperor until additional technological developments have occurred. If the stories told about the first emperor's mausoleum are accurate, and astonishingly, every piece of evidence points to this being the case, then it houses an immense amount of priceless artifacts and decorations, possibly surpassing any other ancient tomb. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.